everybody, this is Severs back here, and today I am talking about preaching. No, I'm not actually talking about it, I'm preaching. So, um, as you might have saw with this title of this video, it's, um, Come to me all who are weary. No, that's not the title of the video. Um, the title of the video is actually, I'm not really sure yet to be honest, but it's going to be something about, um, being dead in the spirit and how to be born alive again. So today we're reading Acts 2, uh, chapter 2, 14 to um, 41. So with that in mind, bruh, what the heck? just happened. What the? Here we go. That's right. Alright. So. Just adjust my chair. Alright, so. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, uh, the other uh, apostles, and he said, raised his voice, and he addressed the crowd, saying, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are drunk, as you suppose. These people are not drunk. Not drunk. That's a key. That's a key. All right, they are not drunk, as you suppose, because it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, will, will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Am I reading that right? Prophecy? Let's just say prophesy. Um, I will show wonders in the heavens, and above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the lord and everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved fellow israelites and then peter continues saying fellow israelites listen to this jesus of nazareth was a man accredited by god to you by miracles wonders and signs which god did among you through them as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, so King David, I believe, I saw the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb here is here to this day. He was a prophet and knew um, and knew that God had promised him an, on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke to the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to new life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let Israel be sure of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you... All of us sinners, even to this day, presently, 
crucified, all of us crucified Jesus by our sins, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said Peter, to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all of you who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, about 3,000 were added to their number. Oh wow. Alright, sorry about that folks, my recording just magically just cut out. Can't wait. Um, yeah, so back to why I, 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 oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Alright, so, back to... Alright, sorry about that, folks. My recording just cut out. Back to what I was saying. We we're just talking about the Apostle Peter. And, um... Yeah, so we are we we're reading about the Holy Spirit. And, um... It, it was really... This passage... I actually just read it before the video. And it really just... I really just felt infused with the Holy Spirit. And it really just... It really motivates you, doesn't it? Like, I, I really... I really aspire to always have that fire burn I mean not I'll be honest I don't always have that Holy Spirit fire burning in me but it's always something that um I gotta keep asking God to rekindle you know re restarting that flame restarting that flame in my heart because it's easy to get sidetracked in this world right I mean we hear um Peter literally talk about this corrupt generation like corrupt generation and that's literally I think every generation is corrupt right but um i think that's why peter said it is because we can pertain any corrupt generation to every generation every generation of humanity is somewhat corrupt and it will be until the second jesus second coming and that will happen by the way the second coming will happen it'll be when the good and the bad will be separated and one will receive eternal life and the other will receive eternal fire, but aka eternal hell. And you know, it's it's a popular thing in society to joke about hell like like oh yeah bro, I'm going to hell, you know, like it's nothing to joke about. It's really not. It's 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 the worst punishment anybody could ever receive. And it's eternal separation from God. Eternal separation from God is torture as it is, let alone being actually tortured in hell. Um, that's why we want to keep our minds focused on the true, the true prosperity with Jesus Christ. But that's not to scare anybody. I, I often think that, um, people get, are only Christian because they're scared of going to hell. They just use the, I believe in Jesus free card. You know, like, like, yes, believing in Jesus is amazing. But like, if you're only doing it, um, out of fear of not going to hell, then that's just not health. And that's not what God wants. God wants you to believe in Him because um, that that's just what we're meant to do. I mean, we're, we're meant to believe in God so we can have a relationship with Him and grow in communion with Him. And that's that's what it truly means to actually be happy and to have a communion, communion-filled relationship with God. Um, basically, what I mean by that is having a close relationship with God. Let's go. Um, having a close relationship with God is what it really means to be truly happy in life. And, um, I know it's hard, man. It is hard. But I think about what the Apostle Peter said, you know, when he said, um, that how the, the people, they, they're the ones that crucified Jesus. And we can take that and we can use it to that today, too. Although... You know, everyone alive today has not physically crucified. They're not the ones who physically crucified Jesus. All of our sins are responsible for crucifying Jesus. We are responsible. We are all responsible in some way or another for crucifying Jesus. Because by doing our sins, by committing our sins, we gave Jesus 
the reason to die for us, to save us out of pure love. You know, if we never sinned, then Jesus would have, I mean, if, if all of humanity, I mean, not just one person, if all of humanity never sinned, then Jesus would have had no reason to die for us. But, of course, sin, you know, is, is prevalent in our society. I mean, ever since the original sin, I mean, our flesh is easily tempted. And this sin is, is what, is why Jesus died for us. It's because we needed it. <laughs> I mean, that's the long short of it. We, we, out of pure love, God, God, God saw that we needed, we needed this. And there was no other way. So I'm always eternally grateful for Jesus for that. And it always reminds me of how, you know, no matter what suffering I go through, it's definitely not going to be like the suffering Jesus went through, too, most of the time, like, most likely, <clears throat> and, and this is, and this is, you know, the only suffering that I can really think of, I'll go through, is, um, social, um, social awkwardness, you know, social, like, kind of like, oh, you know, you're talking to me about God kind of thing, and really, that's not anything, that's nothing compared to being crucified, or being, or being tortured and and being outcasted and betrayed all these things that Jesus went through and more you know and so I just I always gotta humble myself and remember that you know Jesus he's the one who suffered for for me so now that he suffered for all of us and so now that we have this amazing gift I gotta go share with people who don't know about this gift and and that's just what I'm trying to do with these little, this, these little video shorts. Is just really, really spread the good news because ultimately, like I do believe God is merciful, very all, all merciful up until the very end. But um, that doesn't mean I shouldn't stop telling people about Jesus, you know? Because think about all the good, not just the good, but just, just having a relationship with God. I mean, that that's. That's so good. That is so, so good. And I just, I, I don't know anybody who wouldn't want that. And if, if people don't want that, actually, I do know a lot of people who, I think truly at, at the bottom of all humans' hearts, we do want this en endless relationship with God. And this is why uh, religions, um, not, not of course, like the true, the true faith and the true religions. Um, but I mean, this is why people, a lot of atheists will use the argument that as humans, we're just looking for a way to, you know, um, not be scared about dying or, 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 you know, have hope that there's an afterlife. But if this is true, then we would bend religions to our desires, our human desires, um, which would be very corrupt and evil. And in fact, we do see this um, with a lot of, like, pagan religions. They do bend their human desires to their religion, which if you bend your human desires to your religion, then it's most likely going to be fake because God does not bend his law to our human desires. He He only does what is right and what is his law, out of, um, which is in everything, everything stems from God. Um, every good thing stems from God and God is love. And, you know, we think about love. God does not create love. He is love. Any true any like actual love is an extension of God and I'm not talking about you know just romantically although there can be godly love shown there but I'm talking about in actions that we do for one another brother to brother you know like building building our brothers and sisters up instead of tearing them down you know like speaking kind words speaking love to one another man that is godly love because because love it's not a feeling. It's not a true love. It's not a feeling. It's an it's actions, and and these are the actions that Jesus took out of pure love for us. I mean, the actions that showed why Jesus loves us is that um, he came to Earth to live lowly, humbly, meekly, be outcasted by society, betrayed by his friends, and by many other people who he thought were his disciples, and 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 was tortured brutally by the Romans, like brutally, more than the other people he was crucified with, and dare I say more than anybody else who's who's been crucified on the, actually I can't say that, I don't know for sure if that's factual or not, but the point is that Jesus was
brutally tortured and the, cruci the crucifixion is, is a brutal torture method for death. I mean, and the fact that Jesus he went through that out of just just love for us. I mean, he could have just wiped us out, all of humanity, like absolute Thanos um, mode. And, and he could have said, no, I'm just going to create humans that are programmed to automatically love me and see the truth. But the thing is, though, God didn't want us to be robots. Because that's not true love. True love is not having robot like robotic people being programmed to, to love. True love is loving out of your own accord, your own free will. So this is why God gave us free will. And even if that meant that some people would reject this love, that's how important the free will to love God was. I mean, could you imagine, like, you're a father or a, or a mom, right? And and you and you have the power to make your kids love you. And um. Like, if you had, you know, God's power to make people love you, but you chose to give people free will to, and you knew that some would love you and some would hate you, like, wouldn't that just break your heart as a parent to, to really, to really just have your child be broken, um, and hateful, but you know that it's the only way, because free will, you know, loving your parent with free will it is is the only true love and and I don't know maybe I'm maybe I'm just kind of talking in the jumble here but I, I have a lot of thoughts about this and I've been meaning to talk about them with people for a while so I really I don't know like I guess I'm saying this to my friends that are watching I know I have a lot of friends that are watching I know I have some subscribers from uh, me from two years ago my YouTube channel from two years ago I am um, and you know maybe this is the future subscribers I'm just saying God is love and he wants the whole part about being a Christian is not is not just the religion aspect the really the, the only re reason why the religion aspect is there is because there's a faith aspect once you have faith in Jesus religion follows which is a great and it's amazing but a lot of people follow religion without faith and following religion without faith is just empty actions it, it truly is it's it's empty actions you know if you if you I'm a, I'm a Catholic right and um, I know a lot of Catholic kids who really just they follow religion but they have no faith so they're just doing empty actions they're going to church and staring off into blank space and they're um they might you know they might receive the Eucharist but not be reverent in, in the sense that of uh, receiving Jesus but I'm not even just talking about Catholics, you know, like, just, um, Christians in general, right? Like, be, being Christian, being religiously Christian, it is, being religiously Christian is great, you know? It's great to believe in Jesus, but a lot of people believe that Jesus was, is the Son of God and that He is real. They don't believe that He's their friend and their father also. I mean, God is our father. Jesus is God, and He is our friend, our best friend. He should be. I mean, I know when I make God my best friend, my life changed, and and I'm I'm eternally grateful for that because it's 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 astounding how easy it is to fall into God's love. It, it's you don't you don't have to be fixed. You don't have to be better. You don't have to be anything. You just got to be willing to fall into God's love, and, you know, the point of God, you know, it's not our job to fix ourselves and come to God. It's our job to come to God and let God fix us. That's God's job, and that's what He's going to do, and, and He's going to fix us up so good that, you know, you won't even know that anything bad ever happened to you, and because that's God's grace and that's God's mercy. So I just hope this kind of pertained to people today, and I really hope that it'll pertain to people in the future. If you take the time to watch this, it could save your life, bro. It could save your life from a lot of a lot of trouble. And I say this to anyone out there, whether I know you or not, I say this as your friend, your brother, your just somebody who cares, right? That God cares about you, and God loves you more than anything. And that's why he we're the ultimate creation and so 
God loves you so much, he loved you more than life itself, you know? I mean, if Jesus loved his life more than us, then he wouldn't have died for us, but he did. And he rose again, that's a key point, he rose again, because sin and death have no conquering over us. They can't win over Jesus. They have no conquering over Jesus. So, And he did that so they have no conquering over us too. You know, he did that because he is God and, you know, evil never wins. Because God is all good, but he did that also because so we weren't a slave to sin anymore. So we weren't a slave to so we weren't prisoners to our bad actions and I know it's hard in a society filled with sin and bad actions, but if you keep fighting a good fight, then you will, we will win. Um, and I think, you know, you can be assured of this because God is all powerful. There is no evil that is greater than God. So even if it seems like the world is filled with sin and it feels impossible to fight, God is all powerful and in Christ we can do all things. So. With that being said, God bless you guys, and um, have a good Saturday, if, if it is Saturday when you're watching this, yeah. Alright, bye, shall we back out? It's kind of cringy, I have to cut that out, nah, we'll keep it in there.